So on this channel we've covered many different builds that you can create in the world of Elden Ring and essentially I've shown you the best way to become overpowered using all of those builds that we've covered. But it got me thinking as we're leading up to the DLC for Elden Ring what is the best ways to play Elden Ring in preparation for the DLC to keep the game fresh and entertaining until we get this new content. So in the continuation of our little top 5 series that we've got going on at the moment, here are my top 5 builds to use in Elden Ring and if you haven't used any of these you definitely should give them a go. And just quickly as I mentioned at the beginning we've covered most of these on the channel so I'm not going to go into great detail about how to make these specific builds, I'm simply going to be just generalizing and talking about the build itself but if you want a more detailed look as to how to create the best version of each build that we discussed today do look down in the description because the links will be there and whilst you're down there we are aiming for 10,000 subs this year because last year we had the goal of 500 subs and we managed to add another zero onto the end of it if you are new around here and you enjoy the content do consider hitting that subscribe button it helps out tremendously and whilst you're down there if you did like this particular video do hit the like button as well it lets me know you've enjoyed the content and you want to see more in the future anyway before I get too carried away what are the best builds that you could be using in Elden Ring and of course it wouldn't be a top five list in terms of the best builds without this mention at number five bleed and yes, I know, before I get absolutely slewed in the comments, it is the most crutch mechanic in the game, I understand that. I know that it's the noob-tastic build, and my grandma could probably play Elden Ring with a bleed build, but there are a few new faces around here, and I'm sure some of you have picked up Elden Ring around Christmas or shortly after, so if you are genuinely new to Elden Ring, bleed builds are the ones to get you through anything that is giving you trouble. If there's any boss, you are struggling with either infuse your weapon with a bleed ash of war or pick up weapons such as the Eleonora's pole blade, rivers of blood, curved bandit swords, anything like that that has a bleed effect will be your best friend. Obviously with bleed build you can also add this as an aesthetic to be an ultimate samurai. There's a lot of katanas available in the game and my personal favorite when I'm using bleed builds is to sort of play as that jacked up samurai with double katanas and just go absolutely ham on all of the enemies in front of me. Bleed build turns Elden Ring into what used to be trace what the enemies are doing, trace their movements and dodge it at the right times to an absolute hack and slash which is why it's obviously considered the noob build as anybody can use it to get through the game with absolute ease but it is still very satisfying coming up against the demigods and all you've got is a katana yet you absolutely destroy them in seconds because you diminish half their health in literally two hits and obviously like I say if you don't want to use dual katanas you can use things like pole blades to become even cooler because what's called in two katanas obviously both of them combined into one weapon it's very very cool visually um, making this build and coming up against the enemy so if you just want to have fun chill out relax and destroy absolutely everything bleed is the way to go but if hack and slash is not really your sort of thing and you're more so of like an archer or spell caster to be exact number four of course is the mage or sorcerer build again very very similarly i guess not so much now but at the very beginning of elden ring there was a lot of broken builds with intelligence and mage spells especially comet azure everybody knows about the lightning beam the fire malaysia as i like to call it where you can mix it with the intelligence physics and the terra magica buffs and literally just like bleed you can annihilate any boss that's in your way unlike bleed most bosses aren't as resistant to like magic or at least the way that you can buff your spells in this game so if you are coming up against anybody that's resistance to bleed uh intelligence is your backup for that so <laughs> bear this build in mind because essentially you can pick up stars very very early Early, as you can become a sorcerer at the very beginning of the game and you can pick up some incredibly useful staffs in the Raya Lucari Academy which again can be accessed fairly early in the game and if you go through Selen's quest you can access powerful spells pretty much end game spells fairly early on especially Comet Azure which is towards the Volcano Manor so essentially as soon as you've got access to the Altus Plateau you can grab that as well 
but essentially it is pretty damn cool rolling around as a badass mage especially if you look the part you can make yourself look like Roger that you meet as well in Stormvale Castle or you can steal the look of one of the twin sages or even go all out and be like a evil wizard or sorcerer and use the albinoric dresses as well so there's many many different ways to look for the wizards or sorcery builds which gives it its bonus points I guess from the uh, from the samurai but essentially bleed and mage are somewhat the same in my eyes and I find the same enjoyment playing them because I mainly use them for overpower builds. The other side with mage builds as well as you can obviously swap out the uh, spells that you're using so if you don't want to be overpowered and you want to be more techy with it you can do so again more options available to you so bonus points for that as well. But now number three and these really are genuinely like my most favorite ways to play the game. Number three is going to be a stealth build. Again this is somewhat my way to play when I'm clearing out dungeons or if I feel like I don't want to just run in run and gun because I'm always doing one of two things I'm either going in full force run and gun just hit everything that's on my screen and kill it or I'm trying to play it tactically like I'm playing like splinter cell or like assassin's creed or something and I'm trying to progress through the areas without being detected and taking down enemies one by one. The backstabs and the critical hits in this game are always extremely satisfying, they always have been throughout the Soulsborne series, so constantly doing backstabs and critical hits, it just never gets old with me, so it's always, always really fun to try and take down the huge enemies or the biggest enemies possible without even being seen by anybody else. Of course, you can mix this in with throwing objects, anything to distract the enemies, you can do that as well to lure them away and simply bypass them without them even knowing that you're there. And again, it's just a neat little challenge that you can play with yourself if you're doing dungeons or clearing like hero passes, anything like that, to try and do it stealthily and take down as many enemies as you can. I do also consider this as the death build, so stealth slash death, because I typically merge the two. Uh, Destined death weapons such as the black knife and even summons like the black knife Tishi are extremely overpowered in this game their ability their skill power takes 10% of the health away from enemies whilst also doing continuous damage to the health bar as well along the way so combined 20% health deduction straight off the bat and then consistent health degeneration as well with the attack, so that's pretty damn cool. And then you can also mix it in with the black flame incantations and spells, so again, deal the initial damage and deplete health over time and just watch the bar deteriorate. In actual fact, I don't think I've made a specific build around sort of like death abilities or black flame, so that just reminded me, I might make a video on that in the future. In fact, no, I will make a video on that in the future so for now I don't have the right build so I lied at the beginning I'm sorry the other builds are in the description but the stealth and death build is going to be missing but don't worry they'll come out in the future that's why you should subscribe then when it does release you won't miss out so <laughs> hit that sub button and whilst you're taking two seconds just to do that let's move on to numero dos strength now this one was a more recent video but I'm taking a play on that video and I'm more so going to call it the caveman build. So whenever I'm playing Dark Souls or Elden Ring I like to use the uh, wretch build or like the, the basic build where you literally have no armor all you've got is the worst weapon in the game and in this game it is the club. I think it actually might be the club for all of the Soulsborne. Don't hold me to that but essentially in Elden Ring you've got no armor and then all you have to your disposal in terms of a weapon for damage output is the club hence why I call this build or playthrough the caveman build because not only are you just relying on brute strength because you're going to be solely leveling up strength or dexterity the added bonus to this build and I guess a challenge that I'll pit to you guys is to simply complete the game whilst using the clubs now I'll say clubs because across the lands between there are three the first one the small club that you get when you spawn in there is also a medium club and a large club but essentially you've got three tiers of the club and they obviously deal more damage compared to their predecessors so the large club being the best it's really enjoyable walking again into like a boss fight with say godfrey or even the elden beast this ultimate demigod that's supposed to destroy absolutely everything and just bonking him around the head 
with a massive stick. I mean, if the word degrading could be depicted, um, that would be it. Because that's essentially what this build is about, is just trying to keep your armor as low as possible whilst progressing through the game and just annihilating all of the bosses with said stick of death. And if you're anything like me, you're gonna have an absolute blast doing it. But as much as that is incredibly fun, there is one more build which I consider to be the most fun or the most enjoyable to use. And that is going to be the faith build or the draconic faith build because again if you're a regular around here you would know how much i love this build because i love the draconic spells in elden ring and just the faith build in general the ancient dragon incantations and the weapons available such as the bolt of grand sax are just incredibly powerful incredibly useful and it just allows for all of the attack ranges to be covered so with the dragon breaths you can cover up close and long range with the bolt of grand sax you can hit them like a sniper from out of nowhere so essentially if you want to cover all areas and just dominate the playing field faith is the way to go especially draconic faith is the way to go it does require you to sort of get a bit further into the game to have it fully set up because most of the spells unfortunately the draconic spells are found in the uh, crumbling uh, pharaoh Missoula area so that's where all the draconic sort of spells are hidden but you can get holy spears as well and just general incantations to help out with faith builds much earlier in the game so again it's a useful build to have sort of beginning middle and end it's definitely another adaptable build so you can also focus on healing and just status effects and buffing up your character more so than just raw damage output with the dragon uh, build that I've obviously noted but as per my previous <laughs> build the strength build I'm very much a damage heavy player so uh, I enjoy the fact that I can annihilate pretty much anybody with the bolt of grand sacks especially the weapon art because that's just so satisfying charging up the bolt itself and launching it at your enemy's heads I know I'm sadistic I don't care it's bloody brilliant but essentially you can mold this faith build into an entirely different build and become an ally or a medic if you're using it for online purposes and it's just incredibly useful in pretty much all areas of the game but essentially like i say i'm not going to go into too much detail if you do want a more detailed look of all of the builds that we've covered apart from the stealth build uh they are in the description down below hopefully i've shown you a couple of ways that you can play the game that maybe you didn't think to even try because i would definitely urge you to try all of these builds at least give them a go explore what you can do with each and every one of these builds because they're all equally overpowered in their own right as i say there's multiple videos on this channel covering different weapons builds so definitely have a look if you're new stick around for more content like this if you have enjoyed it by hitting the sub button and let me know in the comments down below what builds you guys like using the most because i, I I am genuinely intrigued to know what you guys like using because maybe there's something on here that I haven't covered so definitely let me know in the comments down below what type of builds you like to mix and match because you may put two of them together maybe you do a strength and a faith build or maybe a bleed and a mage because you can use weapons with the mage build maybe not bleed but you know what I mean you may mix and match so let me know what you guys use in your current playthroughs and obviously if you're looking for more suggestions I'm sure they'll be in the comments down below so definitely share your thoughts with everybody but that's pretty much everything from me so thank you very much for watching just know that you're all legends and I can't thank you enough for all the support that you showed last year and i can't wait for what 2023 has to hold for us but for now i'll let you guys go so have an amazing rest of your days and i will catch you in the next episode of whatever it is that i make bye bye